Good morning. It's so good to see everyone. I'm Carmen Pate. So glad you've joined us for Grace Cafe. Hey, Sean, how are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me on, Carmen. Well, let me take a moment to introduce you to our audience. Sean is the president and CEO of 40 Days for Life campaign. Uh, Sean Carney is, began as a volunteer in the pro-life movement while he was still in college. During that time, he helped to lead the first ever 40 Days for Life campaign. After graduating from college, he was asked to serve as an executive director of the Coalition for Life, a local pro-life organization in Texas. And so from the beginning, Sean has been instrumental in growing 40 Days for Life, not only nationally, but internationally. He's a regular spokesperson and his work has been featured on hundreds of outlets, as he's mentioned Fox this morning even. Uh, he's been on uh, USA Today in their media. He's been in the Christian Post, the National Catholic Register, on and on we could go with the coverage that we've had. Now, many of you who listened uh, or tuning in today, you may recognize the name from the movie that's been a hit this summer, uh, and that is Unplanned, the story of Abby Johnson, her leaving Planned Parenthood. Sean Carney was instrumental in, uh, in, in God using him to pray for her, to love on her, to minister to her as she made that choice to leave. And so it's an incredible story. If you've not seen the movie, you must see it. It is, uh, it is, it touches all of those who uh, are even thinking about the issue of life. And uh, you know, he's Sean is one of the most sought-after speaker, pro-life speakers around. Uh, I always told Sean he could go into politics <laughs> because <laughs> he uh, just has that charisma and. Uh, 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 just you uh, become a best friend of Sean if you spend a few minutes with him. He's also one of the <clears throat> co-authors of 40 Days for Life, Discover What God Has Done, and he is the author of The Beginning of the End of Abortion. So, uh, Sean, I'm just so glad you could spend a few minutes with me this morning and with our audience. Uh, you know, here at, at Grace, we, we are all about God's grace, God's love, God's mercy, uh, the importance of prayer, and that's why I love 40 Days for Life, because that's what you guys are about as well. Let's talk well, just a moment, you, Sean. Yeah. You you know it well, as, as you were there from the beginning, one of our original board members for 40 Days for Life, and, you know, really, we should, I guess, accept abortion, there haven't been two or 300 in the history of our country. There have been 62 mm. million, and it's it's hard to even say that. We can't even relate to, to 62 uh. million of anything, much less, um, you know, the taking of innocent lives um, every single day. And so I think that prayer is, is not optional when you enter the pro-life movement. We are dependent on prayer, and there's a lot of great causes where you can run out the door and, and try to solve a problem. Um, but I believe that with abortion, doing that without prayer, you're gonna be done in, in 10 minutes. You're gonna get burned out, you're gonna get discouraged, which is the tool of the devil, and you're not gonna make it. And so 40 Days for mm -hmm. Life from the beginning has, has pointed people to uh, praying before we engage in activism, that that the contemplative always comes first before the active. And I think that's why we had so many wonderful people around the world say, I could never do anything like that. You go pray in an abortion facility. I'm, I'm so scared. And then, you know, we uh, they, they lead a campaign that they get involved. And those are the people that always are calling saying a mom chose life or our abortion facility closed or our own abortion worker left. So uh, prayer is at the yes. root of, of this work for sure. Oh, no doubt about it. As a post-abortive woman, uh, I also understand the importance of grace and mercy, as we mm -hmm. all do. Uh, but for those who are post-abortive, there is that sense of, of, I am the worst of sinners. I am mm -hmm. broken. I can't be fixed. 
And yet God in his mercy steps in and heals and restain, uh, uh, restores, redeems. Talk about uh, that, that attitude and that effort as you go about uh, reaching out to women who are working in the industry, as you did with Abby Johnson, and those that you recognize who are post-abortive. Well, we see ourselves as, as missionaries. And ironically, 40 Days for Life has gone to, you know, 56 countries. But we, we do that by just going around the street corner to a, a place of pain. No one grows up wanting an abortion. No one grows up wanting to work in the abortion industry. And so our approach is not that we go there to, to judge people and to condemn them. Um, that'd be, uh, that would take less time <laughs> if, if we didn't care about them, we could run out there and say, what you're doing is really horrible and you're really horrible. Have a nice day. Uh, but that's not the role of, no. of, of gospel. That's not the great commission that we were told by, by Jesus Christ to baptize all nations. And so we are going to where pain is and we go with him. We, we are, as Mother Teresa famously said over and over again, we have to be his hands and feet. And I believe we have yes. to be his hands yes. and feet at, at abortion facilities. And, and we let those women know and then they see it, that we are here yes. before your abortion. We are here during your abortion if you walk in those doors and we're even here after your abortion. And many of the women, after they have an abortion, because as you know, they don't all turn around, obviously, but when they go yeah. through with the abortion, they're, they're much more open to the, the post-abortive healing information that we have, the free medical help that we have. And I think that that, you know, is the nature of the human heart when it's broken, is that we are more open to yes. God's love and his mercy. And so... I always emphasize to all of our local leaders and about 25% mm -hmm. of our local 40 days for life leaders are women who have had an abortion. Uh, it's my favorite statistic. Wow, it something? shows the whole yes, thing. Yes. But, it, yes. but they yes. see when people come out, they see that heart and they see that we're there for them. And you also see it if you work in the abortion industry. You know, they want us to be yeah. judgmental. They want us to be angry so they can continue to justify what, what they're doing. And when we're not, when we endure the weather and when we keep telling them good morning and smiling and we feel like it and don't feel like it, eventually they start to question the work that they're doing and they leave. And Abby is the 26th out of about 200 abortion workers wow. who we've been blessed to, to get out of the abortion industry. And I, I love that, that whole idea of showing, showing Jesus to them because they're not expecting that at all. Uh, they, they have heard that Christians are judgmental, that Christians do not love them. And so for them to see firsthand that that's just not true, uh, that, that there is love and there is an offer of hope, which we have in Christ to them. Uh, it's transforming and it's not, it's not man that does it, is it, Sean? It is God that does it through, through those who are reaching out to them. It is God that does it. And so many can, can have 10 reasons of why this woman should have an abortion, why this man should have nothing to do with ever, you know, having a, a child. And it's easy to justify, but those are all reasons of the world and they're, they're unnatural yes. reasons. You know, they're, they're not, yes. women do not jump out of their cars screaming about reproductive rights at abortion facilities. They, they yeah. slowly yeah. And, and sadly get out, often alone and, and go in. There's, there's no spirit, there's no hope, there's no, um, you know, self-confidence at all. And when we show them Jesus, as you articulated so well, when we, you know, offer a loving hand and say, you don't have to do this today, you know, they, yeah. they take us up on it. Because often I've heard so many women who chose life, who came that close to having an abortion, and they, they just plainly say, I, I, know, I knew what I was doing was wrong. I, I thought of my grandmother or my aunt or my pastor or that, that person that was pricking my conscience. 
And I prayed to yeah. God that morning that he would send me a sign and you guys were that sign. Mm. And so mm. it's just beautiful to, to see. And we have to trust our Lord. We cannot worry about what the world will say. Of course, they'll say we're judgmental. Of course, we'll say, you know, we're a bunch of religious nuts and all that stuff. We're used to that. But that none of that matters. It only matters, mm -hmm. you know, why mm -hmm. we're there and that we continue to keep the people we're there to serve as our focus. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, certainly we know the hope that we have in Christ, which we offer those individuals. But I think it's also important for those tuning in and, and maybe they are undecided. Uh, they also need to know there's practical, hands-on, come alongside you help if you should choose yes. life. Can you talk about that just a moment? Yes, and it's not that there's, there's some help. It's that there is more help today than in the history of abortion in the United States. Uh, you know, over the last 25 years, over half of the abortion facilities have closed. And during that time, under the leadership of, of wonderful evangelicals, primarily across the country, uh, we have a vast array of pregnancy resource centers that offer a medical help where you will see a doctor um, you know, when, uh, for, for medical care. And those are everywhere. And that is a beautiful asset that we have. There's also a post-abortive healing. But these pregnancy resource centers, not only do you get the medical care, you get help after you have the baby. Uh, they have earn yeah. while you learn programs where you can get formula and diapers. And, and you know, you, I've been in a hundred uh, or, or hundreds of pregnancy centers over my life. And it's, it's great, they, they think of everything. And I have seven kids and, and a baby on the way. So we, <laughs> yes. we're always yes. updated with the new cribs oh. and the new, uh, the new car seats and you know, all that stuff. It, and parenting is hard. There's always, there's so much to keep up with. And they think of all that. And, and yes. the, you know, the yes. myth of, of the pro-life movement doesn't care uh, you know, about children who are actually born is is just a convenient cop-out. It, it is quite mm -hmm. the opposite. Mm -hmm. and these pregnancy centers mm -hmm. do that. So it's wonderful to see the help. It's wonderful to see, you know, that's one of the things I got a lot of comments about when Abby Johnson left is, why, why did you even help her? And some mm -hmm. Christian mm -hmm. said that to me. I mean, I'm glad she had a change of heart and mind, but yes. you know, she yes. made her bed, she can sleep in it kind of deal. Uh, I'm not helping. Right. I'm not helping uh, her do that. Why did you, mm -hmm. why did you, why were you so concerned for her after she left? And uh, I never really thought about that, but I was asked by a, a few people right after she left. Of, my answer was because we say that we're going to help them. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? We're all for <laughs> loving what like. Oh, you quit and now you converted. Well, gotcha. You know, good luck. In right, your life. right. This, this you wouldn't do rough. that. No. Very difficult for workers to transition out. It's very difficult for uh, the women who who have abortions and then and then leave to pick up their life. You know, it's not an overnight process. And we, no, you know, that no. I think that is the the nature of the church that we we bring people yes. into the fold not wish them good luck, but to know there's a tremendous wound there that that mm. must be uh, cared for. Oh, no doubt about it. You know, I had the blessing. Uh, I, when I left my career many, many years ago, I went into ministry and my first ministry was a pro-life pregnancy center uh, in, in uh, Spring, Texas. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I think, I think back then, because that was in 1991, Sean, I think back then of what we offered to come alongside in the diapers and the clothes for the babies, maternity clothes for the mom. We, we, we developed a friendship where we stayed alongside them for like a year or maybe two years after the baby was born. And it was such a beautiful thing. And as you've said, over in recent years, uh, much, much more is being done through pro-life pregnancy centers for the woman. So like you said, they, they literally do, do come alongside. It's not, oh, thank you for choosing life. Now you're on your own. No, it's we're with you. We're for you. And there's that spiritual side. We're praying for you. Uh, we we always, always pray. They come to know Jesus Christ as their savior. But we 
pray also and work alongside them to mentor and develop them uh, to grow in their relationship. And that's what it takes if we're going to build a life culture. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's the complete opposite of a lobby of a Planned Parenthood abortion facility. When you walk into a pregnancy resource center, it's warm and, and, and it's, it's welcoming. And of course you're getting truth, but you're also yeah. more importantly, getting truth and love. And yeah. the love yeah. in which that truth is conveyed, we can help you. You don't have to do this. We'll offer you medical care. But it, it's often the first time they've encountered love, the first time they've mm. encountered our Lord. And that, that yeah. is ultimately what we're longing for. Things are never right at yes. home yes. for couples going in for abortions. It's never okay yes. at home. And that's mm. really what we're, what we're longing for. So. It's such a beautiful thing. I We work the closest with pregnancy resource centers across the country, 40 Days for Life does, because we're right there. You know, we're, we're the last line of defense. Yeah. You really never, you never want your child, your niece to ever see us. Um, we're the last right. line of defense right. physically at the facilities. And that's why, obviously, we have to have a place to send women and, and often yeah. drive them you know, directly there ourselves. And it's been a wonderful partnership with with mm. all the wonderful pregnancy resource center directors. Just amazing. You mentioned earlier, I think you said uh, 40 Days for Life campaign, which literally is 40 days of praying out in front of abortion facilities. Uh, you mentioned, is it 57 countries that you said? 56, 57 yes. countries? Yes. Yeah, 56 countries. And so yes. it's, it's over 800 cities. It's amazing. So, now, have you discovered through that time, Sean, that that uh, it's it's pretty much the same issue around the world, then, isn't it? The idea of this culture of death, this this discarding of of, of inconvenience instead of seeing that child as as a beautiful treasure of the Lord. Uh, how how has that happened? That all these countries have joined in. Well, that, that's a great question. I think one of the hardest things to see around the world is that abort, we're very blessed in the United States. The pro-life movement in the United States is robust and abortion is still a main hot button issue. And it's not in some of these countries. Politically, in a lot of these countries, it's a yes. dead issue. Uh, places like England, certainly Canada. Um, much of the West, it's a dead issue, except in America. So that's why they knock on our door um, to, yeah. to, to help them. And so, you know, we, we have a large presence in the UK. We have a large presence in Africa. We have a large presence in Latin America. Mm -hmm. And in Africa and Latin America, that is us going in to do abortions. That is in Latin America, it's called Pro Familia. That is Planned Parenthood International. And so they go in, they set up abortion facilities. And in Mexico, it's Marie Stopes, which is a British uh, abortion uh, operation. Africa, that's, that's Planned Parenthood going in there. And so what's beautiful, Carmen, is these countries don't look at us, the ones that can say this, and say, America is bad. America is forcing abortion on our country. We love children. Even though that's true for a lot of these places, yeah. they don't do that. They come to us for yeah. the solution. They, they see America, oh. yes, it's the problem, but they also see America as the hope. And that's that's very important. You know, this is mm. this is privately funded, these pro-life groups going yes. international. And we, you know, we're one of the largest ones that has gone into so many different countries. But every time I go, which I do one or two international trips a year, I'm very grateful to get back to the United States and, and see mm. what we have here because these are heroic people leading campaigns in other countries without a lot of the support, no support from government. Government is paying for 95% of the abortions, unlike here wow. in these countries. Wow. But, you know, hostility from, from the media, which we get that, but everything is, is worse internationally it mm -hmm. really is mm -hmm. and they believe and i believe that when america ends abortion then the world will follow and and that 
that we can see happening That's a goal just to through. Shoot for. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Wow, incredible. How God has been working through 40 days for life in a miraculous way. We've said that from the very beginning. Uh, how many years now? Sean, have you been together? I have to count my kids. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. I can, I can only keep up with the years of 40 Days for Life, but what baby did we have that year? Um, so this, <laughs> this, is the, this is the 12th year. Wow. The 12th wow. Year. Just amazing. How many babies has God saved through 40 Days for Life in those 12 years? He has saved 16,004, to be exact, that we know of. Those Amazing. are the babies we know Incredible. Incredible. And I am just so thrilled to hear that number. And, and it's also a testament to the fact that this is God's work. And I, right. I think, you know, one of the things I've learned, Sean, no matter what ministry I've worked with, either on the board or as a volunteer or whatever, uh, if God is not in it, it will not succeed. But when God is in it, you can't stop it. And, and I, you know, we talked from day one when I was on your board, uh, this was a God thing. And we knew that God was going to take it to big places. But I have to tell you, I never dreamed it would be this big, Sean. Uh, and I know you must just have to pinch yourself each day to say, is this real? Oh, I, I do. And not only was it that we never imagined that it would go anywhere. I remember David yeah. Brett and I saying, you know, we'll do this once or we'll do it now twice. And there was yeah. no money. As you know, we were in personal credit card debt. I had a lien on my house at one point <laughs> because we couldn't pay our taxes. And my address was the, uh, was the, was the official <laughs> for days. So we have all those sort of exciting you know, entrepreneurial startup stories. But with this 40 Days for Life, it's always been so different because it was God. And I'm, I'm you know, we were, without him, the, the, we wouldn't have been inspired to do 40 Days. And I wouldn't yeah. have imagined people would want to do it. I mean, I look at how small we thought of, this is hard and it is hard leading a 40 Days for Life campaign. Still is, probably harder than ever. Yeah. But yeah. Yes. we had to trust that people would raise their hands. And I do remember our, our founding board chair, uh, Mr. Jim Olson, he said to me in his office, yes. there are people out here that want to do this. There are heroes in America that want to end abortion. They're going to raise their hand. And uh, he was right. And, and it's just been awesome and, 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 and humbling to be part of it. And I think... Yes. You know, it's one of those things where with with great growth and mm -hmm. from the world standpoint, success uh, yes. comes great responsibility, great Absolutely. responsibility. This is this is not a, a small matter we are confronting in, in the yes. public where it is it is destroying the world and it's destroying our future. And it's the worst thing about humanity that we will pay a doctor, a healer to end the life of our child, that we've lost so much hope yes. that we feel that that's required. So yes, I think yes. some mistake and it, it forces us to rely on him and his grace. No, no doubt about it. Uh, and, and one of the things I always try to say, Sean, is this is a spiritual battle. Yes, politics has gotten involved in it, but at its root, it's a spiritual battle. And again, go, going full circle to the beginning of this conversation, that's why it has to be about prayer. It has to be about seeking him first. And, and, uh, and I, know, I know that's where your heart is, letting the Lord lead and guide this entire campaign. Otherwise, it will not survive. So uh, I, I just appreciate your heart in that matter. It is, and, and it's, it's so personal for us with our relationship with Christ because he could have yeah. popped out of and save us from our sins in a millisecond. Yes. But he doesn't do that. Yes. God sends him through the family, through the womb. Uh, you know, he's born yes. in a barn and, and, and he, he lives and he suffers and he dies for our sins and he rose, but he started out as, as a child in the womb. And so I think that that 
you know, we have to personalize that. Yes. He, he didn't have to do that. He chose to do that. And, and now, statistically, the most dangerous place in the world. So it really should, um, you know, be a call to action for those who believe to do something in the pro-life movement. Not everybody's called to go out to the abortion facilities, but, but to do something. Yes, 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 yes. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Uh, Sean, you've written a new book. And as we close, I'd love for you to tell us uh, uh, how to uh, learn more about 40 Days for Life, how to learn more about your book, The Beginning of the End of Abortion, where we might can get it, and uh, how those tuning in today might get involved in this wonderful work you're doing. Yes, well, uh, the beginning of the end of abortion, I released it uh, last fall. We're just coming up on one year, and it's been uh, uh, wonderful to see some of the responses. I took 40 stories, and they're true stories of how God has used 40 Days for Life and why we are seeing the beginning of the end of, of abortion. And so it has a daily scripture, it has a daily prayer, and, and then I, yes. I get into these stories. I've been told it's pretty dramatic. It kind of has a, high, a lot of highs and lows. I didn't mean for it to be that much of a roller coaster. But uh, uh, we've been very, very happy with it. We're going on our fourth printing this fall. And so uh, the wonderful. response has been great. And you can get it on Amazon. You can get it at 40daysforlife.com. And on 40daysforlife.com, you'll see everything that we offer. You know, we have a podcast, a weekly podcast. We will be announcing uh, over 400 cities that will participate in the fall campaign, be our largest ever this wow. fall, starting on September the 25th. So uh, go to 40daysforlife.com, and we've got plenty of things coming out. We also have the exciting news and offers on the uh, DVD of Unplanned, which will be out, and, and we'll, we'll have exclusive bonus features that we're, that we're offering uh, with our DVDs. So lots of good oh, stuff fun. on there. Lots of good stuff. Sean Carney, you are just such a good friend, and I just have such respect and awe of all that God's doing through you. I pray he'll continue to bless you, bless 40 Days for Life. So thanks for joining us on Grace Cafe. Well, thank you. Thank you for your joy, and thank you for your persistence to find the Wi-Fi this morning. Good job. <laughs> yes. I, I'm sure people noticed me moving around. The young man was saying, I'm trying to clean the lobby. Could you move? That's <laughs> so, right. <laughs> uh, that's all in the life. All in the life of, uh, of, uh, of Grace Cafe. Well, have a blessed day, and thank you for joining us today. And for all of our audience, thank you for tuning in. Have a great day. See you next week.